May 19th, Elizabeth Downs and her three children were shot in a parked car on a rural road near Springfield. Downs says she stopped to help a man flagging her down. The man then opened fire with a handgun. One child was killed. Eight-year-old Christy and three-year-old Stephen were seriously wounded, and Elizabeth Downs was shot in the arm. Before Susan Smith, there was Elizabeth Diane Downs. Wow, this woman is a piece of work. And so I got to bring y'all this story out of Oregon. And because I already mentioned Susan Smith, I'm sure you know where we're going with this. Elizabeth Diane Downs was convicted in 1984 and sentenced to prison for actually doing the same thing Susan Smith did, but she did something much worse. And then she continued to lie about it for years to come. And so I want you to see the story and I want you to get it in its totality because it's a very wild one. And so I don't want to tell you too much of it. I just want you to see some of it for yourself and you can make your assessment because this woman is still alive. Do you think this woman deserves parole? Do you think people like this can change? I don't. Diane was brought up in a strict religious family in Phoenix. She graduated from high school with straight A's. She married Steve Downs at 17, and almost immediately they had children. It was back in May of 1983, next to this creek, alongside this isolated country road outside of Springfield, Oregon, that this bizarre and tragic crime was committed. It was around 9.45 in the evening when Diane Downs said a man flagged down her car and demanded her keys. When she refused, he pulled out a pistol and shot her and her three small children. I could smell the blood, I could smell the gunpowder, I, I could, it, it was just a really, really horrible feeling. But Diane says she somehow managed to escape and rushed to a nearby hospital. Seven-year-old Cheryl was dead on arrival. Eight-year-old Christy was shot twice in the chest. Three-year-old Danny was shot in the back and lay paralyzed. Diane, however, received only wounds to her forearm. It was all wrong. From the beginning, it was wrong. Detective Doug Welch was one of the first officers at the hospital that night, and although he didn't realize it at the time, this case would consume his life for many months to come. Here was a woman who was completely apathetic about the welfare of her kids. Uh, she was just emotionally flat and uh, preoccupied with something else. That evening and the next day, police were out in full force, looking for any clues that would lead them to the man that Diane claimed did the shooting, later to be known as the bushy-haired stranger. The bushy-haired stranger, huh? Yeah, that sounds like straight bat. You know what I'm saying? But we're going we gonna to continue. We listening. Over the nine months that passed without an arrest in this case, Downs lived with her parents in Springfield. Police reports claim Downs has changed her story about what happened the night of the shootings. They say she gave several different stories about the man who shot them when talking to her former husband or ex-boyfriend. Downs claimed afterward that two men were there the night of the murder and they knew her by name. We asked her about those allegations before those police reports became I know it's 1983, but that might be the worst police sketch ever, man. You, you was never going to catch nobody with that sketch. You know what I'm saying? And again, I know it's 1983. Things have improved since then. People drawing skills, I'm sure, have gotten better. But that's a bad picture of anybody. Diane worked as a letter carrier here at the Chandler Post Office just outside of Phoenix. This is where she would meet a fellow employee, a married man who she would have an intimate relationship with. According to Oregon police, that man would be the reason why she would later try to kill her children. Robert Knickerbocker told Diane he would divorce his wife of 10 years and marry her. But there was one problem. You see, he didn't have kids and he didn't want kids. Hey, I don't have a problem with you having a relationship with anybody, you know, uh, especially if, the, you know, if it's going to work into something serious and how does he feel about the kids? Oh, well, he doesn't want anything to do with the kids. He hates kids. He can't have kids. And he had a vasectomy so that he can't have kids, on and on and on. 
Diane and the children moved to Springfield, Oregon. She set up a new life in this apartment house and waited for her boyfriend to get a divorce and join her, but he never showed up. According to police, she became obsessed with trying to get him, writing him letters every day, but they would come back unopened. He would change his mind on a daily basis. I'm coming, I'm going, I'm coming, I'm going. I want a divorce, I've changed my mind, I don't want a divorce. A week and a half later he changes his mind, he doesn't want a divorce, okay? Uh, this was a real obstacle as far as Diane was concerned. Those kids were a burden and there was no way that she could see that she was going to get this guy up to Oregon as long as she had the kids. Along with the letters, this statuette was found in Diane's apartment. Inscribed at the base to Christy, Cheryl, and Daniel. I love you, Mom. Dated just six days before the shooting. Police believe this was not a gift, but a memorial. Because soon, Diane would be without her children. Yeah, it's wild that this was even an option. You know, a man should not be that against children if you're dating a woman with children. What do you think is going to happen there? And sometimes I think men that find themselves in this position, maybe they're just trying to see how much they can get away with, how much they can do. This is wrong, though. And a man shouldn't be interested in you. Y'all shouldn't even be having a discussion if you have kids and you don't want or like kids. That shouldn't even be a topic that y'all are dealing with as far as dating goes. So she's... She's in love, I guess. How, you know, however that works. Because again, I don't know how you can love somebody who don't love your kids. That's it's absurd. The trial was held here at the Lane County Courthouse in Eugene. And although the prosecution felt they had a strong case, they were still concerned about their only eyewitness. Would little Christy Downs, now nine years old, be able to take the stand and testify against her mother? In an emotional and oftentimes tense account, Christy Downs told the jury what happened that night. When asked, who shot you? She replied, mom did. Her daughter Christy testified that mom stopped the car, got out, and then walked to the trunk where she obtained something. We feel it was a murder weapon. And then walked back where she reached inside and shot the kids. After that, we think that uh, Diane then shot herself. See, everybody knew she did it, you know what I'm saying? But it was the evidence collection and all of that that was taking forever. And I do think, you know, evidence collection now, of course, would be better. But this does speak to ineptitude, right? The inability to close the deal before it becomes more of a problem because I would say Elizabeth Diane Downs became and created more of a problem after they knew she did it, right? It, it didn't, it's not like they stopped her immediately. She was able to go nine months before she was arrested. So, I mean, she was able to move around pretty freely in I mean, we, we talk about nine months only, but still, that's a lot of time when you're guilty of a crime and know you should be locked up. According to police reports, Steve Downs and Robert Knickerbocker told authorities Diane left Arizona with that gun in the trunk of her car. The gun hasn't been seen since. Downs kept a diary. It was a form of solace for her. Her journal entries took the form of unmailed letters to Robert Knickerbocker. She wrote of her love for him and the day-to-day -day events that happened before the murder. But May 19th, the night of the shootings, is blank, except for the date sketched at the top. And see, it's clear to me that the dude didn't want her anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yet I just don't think a man is going to tell you that he can't be with you because of your kids. And, you know, that means anything other than he just don't want to be with you. That's the nice way of letting someone down. But see, she went the extra mile and thought she could get rid of her kids to be with him. And so her diary entries being riddled with 
topics about him and writing about him every day. She just seems to be obsessed in living in a relationship with him when there really was no relationship. I mean, if we're being honest, the entirety of their relationship would be whatever, you know, sex they had and whatnot, and that's that. He probably wasn't fooling with her like that. And the closest she could get would be a diary entry. Today, Downs appeared in Lane County Juvenile Court for a hearing to take custody of her surviving children away from her. Oregon Children's Services Division asked for a temporary custody order after Downs tried to remove the children from a hospital and prevented police from talking to them. It was also revealed today that authorities consider Elizabeth Downs to be a possible suspect in the shooting. There has been a great deal of concern by everybody that the children testify one way or another. The actions of the mother in the past few days have been less cooperative, I think, as far as having the children talk to the police. Down's attorney says she is only interested in the children's well-being. He says police have been pestering Christy Downs night and day trying to get her to incriminate her mother. Today, the child's attorney said Christy told hospital staff there never was a male stranger on the road the night she was shot. She doesn't know what happened, and that's what we're trying to protect, is to make sure she's not affected by people talking to her. And that's why we're so pleased with today's ruling, is that hopefully she will not be affected then by law enforcement hovering over her, feeding her information, or trying to do, to, to do things that may taint her ultimate testimony. Everyone agreed the children need proper medical care, so juvenile court judge Gregory Foote granted the temporary custody order to keep the children in the hospital. Children's Services Division will have responsibility for the children. Although the mother has lost custody of the children, Downs' attorney says today's order may limit police access to them and force the police to pursue other leads. There has been a, a real misdirection in this case. Uh, it's easy to try and contact and try and uh, blame someone who's close by. It's more difficult to do a proper investigation and find out who really is involved. Yeah, the wheels of justice were turning way too slow. I mean, if you think about how that plays out, the children could have actually been a victim again. You know what I'm saying? She could have finished the job because the courts had to actually take the children from her. They had to be somewhat pried away from her, if you will. And this is because she wasn't initially charged. The investigation happening so slow led to her being free and having her children. And so this is why I keep stressing that point because the longer she's free, the longer she's able to be a mother because the innocent until proven guilty is working on her behalf. For now, Christy Downs and her younger brother Stephen will remain in protective medical custody, but their future is far from certain. The juvenile court custody battle will continue just as soon as they're both well enough to leave the hospital. In Springfield, Steve Tytler, Channel 2 News. Elizabeth Diane Downs has been isolated from her immediate family since May 19th. That's the night she says a shaggy-haired stranger tried to commandeer her car, shot her and her three children, and then left them on a rural road. Seven-year-old Cheryl died that night. Nine-year-old Christy and three-year-old Daniel were seriously wounded, but survived. Elizabeth Downs was in Lane County Court today because she had told reporters she visited her daughter, Christy, on October 2nd. Mrs. Downs said little today. Slow elevators. <laughs> A visit with the children would violate Judge Gregory Foote's order that Downs not see the children while they undergo medical and physical treatment and while police continue their investigation. A psychiatrist who's been treating nine-year-old Christine said in court that it would create an intolerable stress for her to testify or to visit with her mother. The judge agreed and quashed a subpoena for the child to testify in the contempt of court case. The state had also summoned reporters to tell about stories they'd written wherein Mrs. Downs admitted visiting the children in a meeting set up by her ex-husband. In an interview Monday, Mrs. Downs said she told her daughter she was a suspect in the case. Mrs. Downs continues to be a suspect in the shootings, but no arrests have been made. In Eugene, I'm Jim Hyde, Channel Community. And see, this is a different type of woman. You know, I don't know what type of woman would even do this to her children, let alone the reasoning that she had behind it. But I think what made this case captivating was her willingness to speak in front of the cameras, doing interviews. She all laughing with the reporter. Like, it, it made no sense how she was acting like she didn't just lose her children. 
it's almost unbelievable how she was acting. Like you almost have to see it to believe it. Look at this. I'm throwing the keys, okay? I'm throwing the keys. Four days yeah. later, as one like child was being buried, the other two still in intensive care, Diane reenacted for police what happened that night. Besides wondering why a woman with children would stop her car and get out for a strange man, detectives... And so think about it. This is long before anybody was going viral or there was some type of benefit in saying weird and crazy stuff publicly. But her performance was that of a guilty person. I mean, she just looks guilty, and the more she spoke, the more guilty she sounded. And so I think Elizabeth Diane Downs' story was more so understood from the beginning to be a, a crazy woman. Like I said, who, who laughs and one of your children is still in the hospital? But one of your children just died, but, but you laughing? Died. And see, there's just no doubt, okay, she did it. Okay, you know what I'm saying? If, if anybody has any doubt, you shouldn't. She did it. She, she definitely did it. And they have enough evidence to prove she did it, which is why she got locked up for it. Nobody was fooled by it. She did it, okay? And I do think at this point, I have to let you know that her doing it, but continuing to lie about it, makes this that much worse. The town of Springfield was shocked by the crime. Diane proclaimed herself the victim of an unknown madman. But as police investigated, they found no evidence to support her story about a bushy-haired stranger. Instead, everything pointed to Diane. Most damaging were the slugs found at the scene. Police say they were fired from a 22 Ruger pistol. Although the weapon was never found, Diane was known to have a similar gun. We were able to learn that she did have a Ruger. That she had that gun, and, uh, and she pulled that gun out and shot those kids with it. Police were unable to crack Diane's story about a crazed killer who only demanded her car keys and said nothing more before shooting her children. But during a tape-recorded police interrogation, she slipped, changed the story, and said that the man had called her by name and threatened to kill her if she talked. This individual talked to you, referred to you by name, yeah. and also referred to your tattoo. Right. As close as you can remember, what did he tell you? If you say anything about what happened here, the did come back and kill me. There was only circumstantial evidence to go on. Police felt they needed more. They had to talk to the two surviving children. Danny was too young, and Christy had suffered a stroke as a result of her gunshot wounds and had difficulty speaking. So as this story continues, it's going to be evident and clear that her only way out is to blame her baby daddy. It becomes more of a topic about his part in it. He took a role in it. It's all on him. And that's pretty messed up, but that's the reality of it. I don't think she was left with any other choice other than to make it seem like he was behind it or was involved in it. And this is the route that she took as a defense in the later years, but in the early years, it was just, no, I didn't do it, and I don't know what happened. See, this becomes a cautionary tale for fathers at some point. At some point, fathers have to look at this and say, man, a woman is capable of that? A, a woman could actually do that. And I'm not saying every woman, I'm not saying a lot of women, I'm saying a woman can actually do this. It does happen. And because it does happen, it has happened. I do think people need to be aware of it happening and not just use it as a talking point. Diane Downs is one of those stories that you should probably know as a father because she took a man's children away. Finally, police arrested Diane. And incredibly, she was pregnant once again. Throughout the trial, the public would see Diane being led to the courthouse in a maternity gown and handcuffs. The jury found Diane. So they didn't get her. And subsequently now, she didn't got pregnant by somebody else. The woman who 
just drilled her kids. We know she did it. We can't quite prove it. But you mean to tell me she's pregnant again? See, this is crazy. And I do think this speaks to a history of sorts that nobody ever talks about. Why on earth would they wait so long to where she done got pregnant again if she's the lead suspect, right? They already know she did it. Some people didn't believe her from the beginning. So she's the lead suspect. Like, I, I get you can't stop people from having sex, but they should have picked her up and held her on the charge anyway. I mean, the suspicion of her doing it wasn't rooted in nothing, but because they didn't arrest her, look, she out, still having fun, still having sex, now she pregnant again. And strangely enough, even the people who knew Downs best questioned her account of the shootings on the night of the murder. Downs' father, Wes Fredrickson. Was there ever a time from the beginning when you first heard that you had any doubts about her innocence? Was there a time when I had doubts? Yes, there was. Uh, the first night, as a matter of fact, I had doubts. Uh, I felt, uh, well, I sat and I sized up the situation and I saw at uh, one point that uh, Diane had been shot in the, and everybody knows her as Elizabeth, but Diane had been shot in the left arm and she's right-handed. And I made the comment to the police department there that night. Uh, it looks to me like Diane did it because the children have been shot in the chest and Diane has only been shot in the arm. And I, I says, it really looks like she did it. Uh, that's, uh, that really is the thing that spurred them to go and check, uh, to do the Q-tips, run the Q-tips around her finger to check for the powder residue and to also spray her hands to see if she held a gun. So it was a good thing that I expressed that. And I'm a very open person. If I, if I think that uh, somebody did something, I'm not about to hesitate to say they didn't. You know, I'll, I'll tell them that I think they did. And I'd say the same thing again if I believed it. I've had plenty of opportunity to follow, and, and that's one of the main reasons, I guess, uh, for peace of mind. I've, I've followed through, and I know that my daughter didn't. You know, I can't fault your pops for initially believing you, but once the evidence comes in, the evidence is in, fam, it's over. And so her father should have been thinking about the kids as opposed to her, but he still defended her. He assume that she wouldn't lie and do something as wild but all the evidence points to her as a father we have to keep it real and this is why you have to be the best father you can be and teach your children to stay away from criminal behavior stop thinking you can outsmart everyone because i think that's what elizabeth diane downs thought she could outsmart everyone and talk her way out of it at least her father believed her all right even today, five years later, her former husband would like to see her pay the ultimate price. Executed. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. That's what I... I still feel that they should have done that, you know. We'd all be better off. But it was the children who would pay for what Diane wanted. Well, once she had the kids, you know, it was another story, you know. Well, uh, she treated them like crap. <laughs> You know, she didn't treat them, she really didn't treat them very good. Christy and Cheryl came early in the marriage. Little Danny came later, the result of an affair. Diane then became a surrogate mother, bearing a child for another woman. After eight years, the marriage ended in divorce. It destroyed so many people. Uh, and without, I think without one shred of regret, I don't think there's any regret in her body that she I don't think he's ever come to grips, you know, with what's happened. I mean, the, the, the gravity of what's happened. Uh, the kids especially. She destroyed them. Three perfectly innocent young children. Destroyed them. This was a woman that really got around, you know. Of course, I, I really didn't know that. Hey, you know, you're not supposed to. You're the husband. You're supposed to be the last to know. And so the only issue I take with her baby daddy is he allowed her to see the children after the incident and that came out later but just the mere fact that he did means that at some point he trusted her 
and believed her story and he probably shouldn't have. Like I said, they put them kids in danger every day that she was free. And his initial belief in her may have been motivated by the police not arresting her. But it's clear to me that at first he was riding with her. He wasn't always suspicious like the police were. We've talked to Steve Downs in the past about some of these events. We attempted to contact him again, but his attorney wouldn't allow him to comment because of the trial. Downs knew a lengthy murder trial would make her private life public territory. She's very frank about being a surrogate mother. She ran a surrogate program in Arizona and gave birth to another couple's child. Diane lost visitation rights to her own two surviving children after the murder. She was found guilty of contempt of court for seeing them in a secret visit set up by her ex-husband, She Steve. was found guilty of contempt of court for seeing them in a secret visit set up by her ex-husband, Steve. Police found out about the visit in a letter Downs wrote to her former boyfriend, Robert Knickerbocker, known as Nick, in Arizona. Yeah, Diane Downs was doing a lot. And with that, you got to realize this ain't the end of the story. It just seems like it we just wind it down to the end of that part of the story but we're not even done yet because as a person goes to prison and they're supposed to disappear diane downs doesn't disappear she escaped <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like now just think about that like a woman escaped the facility Jump the fence the whole night, watched it. But after serving only three years in prison, she escaped by scaling over a barbed wire fence. Diane was now on the run and a threat once again, but she says she was looking for the bushy haired stranger. I recognize it to be a shirt belonging to. Prison officials say Downs walked into the unsupervised prison recreation yard early this morning. Apparently, she scaled this 18 foot fence, maneuvered her way over the rolls of razor ribbon, and jumped to freedom, but not before triggering a perimeter alarm system. At the time the officer responded, she was already out here and headed toward the vehicle. Downs ran along. While they conducted an inmate head count, Downs ran to State Street, where she hitched a ride from a Salem woman, telling her that she was involved in a car accident and her boyfriend was injured. An excited Downs then asked to be taken to a convenience store where she could phone for help. Downs was dropped off at this family restaurant about one mile from the correctional facility. Police believe she then traveled on foot into town. Salem, Marion County and state police officers joined forces combing the downtown area for Downs. State police dispatched air patrol as well. Officers say the escape was not well planned and Downs could be headed to a number of locations. Diane was now on the run and a threat once again, but she says she was looking for the bushy haired stra- So police wasn't doing a good enough job you gotta find a bushy haired stranger yourself so you gotta break out of prison to do so you personally alright I just wanted to make sure I understood that correctly because if you don't go and get the bushy haired stranger you will never get caught right cause nobody believed her right so the purpose the reason the entire mindset and framing behind breaking out of prison she got to find a bushy hair stranger they're currently checking prison visiting lists and patrolling the areas where most of her friends live officers are also stationed near the home of her two children who were adopted last year by lane county district attorney police say downs is considered to be dangerous i certainly would advise escape has forced correction center administrators to take a hard look at their security system the woman's prison does not have guard towers or patrol cars. Only the alarm system can alert guards that an inmate is climbing the fence, a security system that has now failed to prevent three breakouts in that area of the prison in the last 10 years. We've had two previous escapes at this facility. Uh, uh, Mr. Scheidler tells me over the last 10 years uh, at that location, the perimeter fence is not alarmed, uh, is alarmed, but the interior fence is not. I would not consider it a, an effective deterrent. Um, and that's essentially how she got out. She went up and over the single perimeter fence. It's a house over here uh, off of State Street that uh, through investigative uh, leads and so forth by, uh, and we've had it under uh, uh, observation uh, surveillance for a short period of time and 
she was ultimately arrested there. Did it look like she had some help from inside the women's penitentiary? Uh, there's a possibility of that uh, from the piece of paper that we sent back to the FBI. She didn't do what we said to start with, just kind of stood there in the room like she didn't know what to do, and finally she came out and, and uh, we took her into custody. Our Salem City Police went with us, and uh, basically we didn't know whether she was there or not. Uh, uh, we had this address, and uh, we just uh, went in there and secured the place, and she was found upstairs in the bedroom with the fellow. You know, security must have really been pathetic back in the 80s on the West Coast we talking, because Elizabeth Diane Downs escaped, Ted Bundy escaped from over there. Like, what type of pathetic policing are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? The jailers can't even keep the people in jail. Like, some of the, like, well-known people who have transcended time, like, they have escapes on their record. And so, like, this is crazy, but... She wasn't gone for long. She got caught. But, like, the, even the story of her getting caught is crazy. Like, it, this woman's story is wild. What's your reaction to the capture of Diane Dan? Made my day. Authorities have been trying to determine how she got there. They trace downs to the house after finding a blank piece of paper with indentations on it in her cell. Sophisticated equipment revealed a map and address that had been written on a sheet above it. Though the men arrested at the house with Downs said they didn't know her when she arrived, Wayne Cipher indicated Downs apparently knew him. Well, she came over and said that she just got out of prison, and Jim let her in. And I said, fine. I was asleep, woke up, asked for me, which is kind of strange. I said, she can stay. She just got out of prison. She can see him spend a couple nights. Cypher says he was once married to a woman now in the state prison. He says he likes Downs and was in the bedroom with her when police arrived. I thought she was the most honest girl I'd ever talked to in my life. <laughs> Doesn't that sound weird? Maybe not. I don't know. She's pulling the, wo the wool over my eyes. So it was a good trip. Downs is now being held in strict isolation in a secluded cell with no personal belongings. And these stories still happen today. People still take out their own kids. It's not a far-fetched thing. It's not a scenario that don't happen a lot. It happens way too often. And there's just not a lot of reporting on it. I know it because I've done the reporting on it. And it's an issue that I think we've seen so much now that people have gotten, you know, they've gotten a little insensitive when it comes to the topic. And I do think these older stories point back to a time where people did care and it wasn't something common. It's a little too common now. And so it's not as big of a story when it happens, but it does happen often. Good evening, I'm Ann Bradley. What you're about to see is a conversation with Elizabeth Diane Downs in November. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to try to give you the inside story about what Elizabeth Diane Downs is like, in her own words. How she feels about her life, her former marriage, her children, and the events that have happened over the past year. You may be wondering why we haven't aired this interview. Eyewitness News waited until now because of the sensitivity of some of the things said, and it does contain some graphic language. These comments represent Elizabeth Diane Downs' thoughts and opinions and are not necessarily shared by KEZI. We've also been concerned about the effect of this material on potential jurors. Now that a jury has been picked, we want to share some of the background of the Downs case with you. Let's start by taking a look back at what happened May 19, 1983. And so, yeah, Diane Downs went on to do a lot of talking. And because of that, we have to do a part two. And so, if you like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and come back for part two, because there's more to this story. It's working on her latest appeal. Why are you here? I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't that kill you? No. Why? I'm a survivor. 
she it wasn't an intentional lie though I didn't sit but you just changed sit your there. story oh yeah yeah I I agree I mean you know you've heard it it's obvious doesn't that make it seem kind of tough to believe what you're saying if you change your story two months after the shooting I, I'm sorry I mean I'm not saying that you have to believe me I'm not saying that anybody has to believe me but I know within myself I can sit here with a clear conscience and know that I did not shoot sure, my kids I could I could sit here and cry and be all upset and what's it going to prove? It proves nothing. I am who I am, and I can't, I can't prove that I'm anybody other than Diane's what I am. a type of woman who I think could cut your throat and then sit down and have lunch next to your body. I wouldn't walk in there and say, this weird person came up out of nowhere and shot us for no reason and just left. I mean, that's not a believable story. I could have, if I had done this, I could have come up with a believable story. It really happened. In a Channel 2 interview last winter, Down says that's what bothers her the most. Yes, I've written to the DA, oh, a couple times, and asked him, for my children's sake, my kids know that I'm in prison, and they need to know that mommy's okay, because they're little. Christy's just turned 12, Danny will be seven in, in December, and they need to know that I'm okay for their own a peace of mind. I wanted revenge at that time. I, I wanted to do some really obscene things to his pregnant. butt when I wasn't allowed to. And I'm not saying he forbade me to get pregnant, but I, I didn't consult him. I wanted to have children, and so I got pregnant without asking permission. Today, Christy and Danny are reported to be in a safe place, and authorities are keeping a close eye on Down's family and anyone involved with her case. With her history, they consider her cunning and dangerous. Sandy Poole, Channel 2 News. In two years' time, I had 10 separate lovers. Two years. That's not very many. And less than half of them were married. My whole life, even as a child, all I really thought about, I used to carry dolls around on a pillow, and I wanted to be a mom. What um, Diane Downs wanted more than anything else was to have children. She got her wish, but her dream turned into a twisted tragedy when she was sentenced to life for shooting her children because her boyfriend didn't like kids. It was not long after Diane Downs and her children were shot on a country road near Springfield that local authorities began to suspect the mother. To this day, Downs claims a shaggy-haired stranger murdered seven-year-old Cheryl, critically wounded Christy and Danny, and then shot her in the arm. But the evidence soon pointed to Downs. Nonetheless, she granted interviews and held news conferences, and an intelligent yet unusually calm person emerged with a history of violence and sexual promiscuity. A year ago this week, one of the most horrendous crimes took place along this stretch of Old Mohawk Road east of Eugene. A 28-year-old woman and her three small children were brutally shot. Elizabeth Diane Downs says the family was on a sightseeing trip when a shaggy-haired stranger flagged her down and demanded her car. She refused, and the assailant shot Downs and her children at close range with a 22 caliber gun. Nine-year-old Christy was shot first, through the hand, into the chest as she tried to protect herself. Three-year-old Danny was shot in the back and is now paralyzed from the waist down. Seven-year-old Cheryl was shot twice from behind and died on the way to the hospital. Police searched the brush and nearby river looking for the murder weapon. The gun was never found and neither was the shaggy-haired stranger. Police started suspecting Downs as the culprit. The prosecution claims her obsessive love for an ex-boyfriend in Arizona was her motive. The state says Downs felt her children were getting in the way and preventing a romantic relationship with that former boyfriend.